What is up everybody out there in Heroclix land? This is Scott Porter and we are here in my man cave actually uh, to film another series of Heroclix unboxing videos. Uh, this time I have a full brick of Uncanny X-Men, the new Heroclix set for Marvel. And if you didn't know, I am a huge X-Men fan. Uh, you can see some of the art up on the wall here by a wonderful artist, Mike Mitchell. Uh, I also uh, have an X-Men stand-up arcade game. Uh, I am a X-Men fanatic. Um, so I'm very stoked about this set. Uh, we have 10 boosters. Uh, how we're going to do it this time is we're going to open two boosters per video. There's going to be five videos total as far as the unboxing goes. And then at the end of the series, I'm going to go ahead and shoot a recap video that has uh, the cards and the bases of all the figures uh, very clear so that you guys can see them all and you can kind of see all the powers on the cards. You can see all the keywords and everything because uh, what we're going to do in this unboxing is kind of just see what's in the set, not so much uh, go super in depth. We'll read some of the powers off the cards, but not go crazy. Anyway, so uh, enough about how we're going to do the series, enough about where we are, enough about who I am. Let's get to the main marquee item, which is this wonderful new set. Uh, this is the first video, so I'm going to take a look at the box real quick. Uh, let's see. Uh, first of all, when paired up, they make the uh, all-new giant size uh, X-Men uh, <laughs> cover from back in the day, uh, which is pretty dang cool. Um, that's what we have on the front of the boxes on the side. We have uh, all-new X-Men, which I've really enjoyed uh, in the past couple of years. It uh, all involves kind of like the time-traveling young Core 5 mutants coming forward. Uh, that's Cyclops and Iceman and Beast and Jean Grey and Angel all coming and uh, landing in current times. We have the Marauders, which I know a ton of people have been looking for. We have Freedom Force, some old-school X-Men villains. And then we have uh, Clix FX bases, this new kind of cool uh, effect base. I don't know how else to explain it. It looks like there's wind and there's uh, the bam thing by Nightcrawler. There's a little bit of fire. I'm sure there's ice. I'm sure there's other types of clicks FX bases. So uh, I guess they're in the boosters. I know they're selling a complete separate pack of them. Uh, so look out for those in stores. Uh, before I start opening, uh, we will look at the back of the box, the Civil War event that we're going to be going through this summer. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and start opening Uncanny X-Men. Now, I think for these, I'm just going to open them in order. One, two, three, four, five. I think that'll be the way that we open them throughout this video series. Uh, I'm very excited. So here we go. First two boosters. Let's do it. All right. see what we have here okay looks like we have Colossus we have Prism we have the all-new X-Men Jean Grey and we have a Sunfire as well take a peek at those guys and then in the bag we have ooh I'm excited about these guys coming back uh, we have a brood Warrior. Oh, it just says Brood. Alright. So there you have it. There's the Brood. Huh? Yeah? Yeah? Alright. Okay. Let's pop all these guys out real quick. I'm very excited. So right off the bat, we get uh, a 50 point Colossus. We get Prism. There's only 35 points. We get Jean Grey, who comes in at 100 points, and Sunfire, uh, who's in at 50 points as well. And Sunfire is 43A, so I'm guessing Sunfire is uh, one of the primes. Let me take a peek there. All right. 
the Jean Grey. Yeah. All right. And the Colossus, I think we've all seen, but let's get a close-up on Prism, too. All right. Take a look at their cards real quick. Ah. Let's see what we have. I know a lot of people have been waiting for the Marauders to make a big appearance or make a big splash, so I'm excited that we have them. Okay, we'll start with Colossus. All new, all different X-Men, unique modifier. So you can only use this once uh, per turn on this particular character. When this character is healed by the X-Men team ability, modify its combat values except damage by plus one until your next turn. Okay, all right. Uh, everything else is just uh, regular printed powers with just some names that Colossus uh, for the motherland, as long as I'm still standing, I will only use my strength to protect. Stay behind me, my comrades. I will protect you. <laughs> terrible, terrible accent. Uh, Prism has a mutant mask of massacre trait. The first time during your turn that one or more opposing characters are KO'd after actions resolve, choose one. This turn, modify this character's speed, attack, and damage values by plus one, or heal this character of one damage. Hmm, it's pretty cool. That's a mutant massacre trait. I'm sure that all the Marauders probably have that. And all the uh, X-Men have the all-new, all-different X-Men trait. Uh, Power Me Up he has, is another trait he has. When making a range attack, Prism modifies his damage values by plus one for each adjacent friendly character with a printed range value of four or more. Hmm. All right. So when he makes a ranged attack, but he only has one damage, so he's going to need that booster to do any damage. So you're going to want to keep him adjacent to other Marauders with range. All right, let's see. Brittle Crystal. Prism takes a maximum of one damage from ranged attacks. When Prism would take knockback, KO him. Oof, that's rough. Let's see. The Brood only has one special power, Paralytic Poison Stinger. Brood can use blades, claws, and fangs. When it does, if the result is four to six after actions resolve, give the hit character an action token. All right. Uh, Jean Grey has a trait called Time Locked. Opposing characters can't use probability control to reroll attacks made by or targeting this character. Hmm. Time Locked. I think all the all new X Men have that. And she does have uh, Phoenix Force, Past, and All New X Men as her keywords. So. Pretty cool. She also has Psychokinetic Merge, which is a, a damage special power. Jean Grey can use Perplex. When she does, she may target a character with the all-new X-Men keyword, regardless of range or line of fire. Wow. All right. So no range, no line of fire needed. Uh, if they share the all-new X-Men keyword, she can Perplex them up. Last but not least, Sunfire, who, like I said, is 43A. So... I'm pretty sure that is an indicator that we're going to have a prime of Sunfire. Um, there's been a lot said on whether or not we're going to have Age of Apocalypse as the chases in this set. Um, maybe we'll have extra Age of Apocalypse scattered throughout. Maybe the, uh, I don't know how they would do it, but maybe the prime could be the Age of Apocalypse. Who knows? Um, he has the all-new, all-different X-Men trait. Also has a, a trait that adds five points to this character, Solar Flare in the Nick of Time, when Sunfire would be KO'd, you may replace him with 43B Sunfire on click number seven. That character cannot be healed this game. Okay, so it's a little lifesaver. All right, pretty cool first booster. So I'm guessing maybe not the Age of Apocalypse Sunfire being that prime. Uh, let's see who's in the second booster. Oh, oh yeah. Fans of the villains are gonna be very happy with this second booster. Uh, first off, we have, uh, since I know, I'm gonna wanna see him up close and personal. Uh, we have Riptide. Yeah, another Marauder. We have a generic Morlock, who can be played at 15 or 10 points. We'll see what that's about. We have another Marauder, and then a member of the X-Force, uh, the very cool Remeter X-Force, uh, Vanisher. 
and he's in his X-Force outfit with all those tattoos and everything. Then we have, like I said, the fans of the villains are going to be excited. Omega Red, 90 points. Starting out with a 12 attack. And then, last but not least, we have... I'm the Juggernaut! <clears throat> he is huge. He is giant. And I've heard rumors that this thing comes off. Yep, it does. Helmet comes off. So that's pretty rad. Let's see what that's all about. Okay, let's take a look at these cards real quick. Second booster, pretty much all villains except for that Morlock and I guess Vanisher sometimes. And Juggernaut, I guess, when he was an Excalibur, was a good guy. Uh, let's take a look at their cards. Riptide, yes, he's a Marauder. He has the Mutant Massacre trait that allows for uh, when an opposing character is KO'd, uh, you can choose to per uh, perplex up their speed attack and damage value by plus one or heal that character of one damage during that turn. Also has Shurikens at 200 miles per hour. When Riptide uses si Sidestep, after actions resolve, he can use Pulse Wave as a free action. Wow. Wow. The Morlock can be played at 10 or 15 points. During Force Construction, you may pay 15 points for this character. If you do, at the beginning of the game, choose a starting line. So obviously, multiple starting lines for the Morlock. During Force Construction, you may pay 10 points for each of this character, up to a maximum of 6. If you do, at the beginning of the game, the opponent must choose a distinct starting line. Ah, so you pay 15 points, you get to choose your starting line. If you only pay 10 points, your opponent gets to choose the starting line. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Way to kind of like, the, the generic Morlock is kind of standing in for all of those Morlocks that were in the sewers way back in the day. So uh, that's a kind of cool way they can represent different power sets. Maybe one of them has super strength, one of them has like a laser beam, one of them, you know, has uh, stealth. So that's, that's kind of cool. Uh, let's look at Juggernaut. Has a trait out of the way. Give Juggernaut a power action to move in a direct path using improved movement, ignoring hindering terrain, walls, and characters. After actions resolve, make a close combat attack targeting all characters he moved through. Hit characters are dealt three damage instead of normal damage, which I think is four, and placed into a square that Juggernaut did not move through adjacent to their current square. He also has this helmet protects me. Juggernaut begins the game with his helmet attached. As long as it is attached, Juggernaut can use willpower, can't be targeted by opposing mind control, outwit, or penetrating psychic blast. When the helmet is attached and Juggernaut is hit by a close attack, that's the new wording, the new Heroclix wording, it just says close attack. It doesn't say close combat attack or close combat action, it just says close attack. The attack deals no damage. Juggernaut and the attacking character each roll a d6 using their printed damage value and adding it to their respective rolls. If your result is lower, remove the helmet. So they do damage. You guys roll off. You compare the totals of 1d6 and the printed damage total on the figure. And if they roll higher than you, you have to take the helmet off. All right, pretty cool. It's like that old school kind of everybody starts attacking Juggernaut at once. Nightcrawler teleports behind him, pulls the helmet off. Pretty cool. Uh, Omega Red, two traits, Deadly Coils and Energy Vampire. Deadly Coils, Omega Red has giant reach of three. When Omega Red hits a character with a close attack after actions resolve, you may place the hit character adjacent to Omega Red. Energy Vampire, Omega Red begins the game on click three. Omega Red can use steel energy, and when he does, he may heal past his starting line. So I bet you uh, those two clicks above his starting line are pretty darn powerful. So that's it. The first two boosters are open. We got a Brood, Colossus, Prism, Jean Grey, Sunfire, Juggernaut, Omega Red, Vanisher, a Morlock, and Riptide. So already Marauders fans are going to be happy. Already fans of X-Men villains are going to be happy. I'm, I'm happy already. I'm always happy to see Sunfire. He's one of my favorite of all time. So uh, tune in tomorrow. We're going to open two more boosters. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you then.